welcome to the Queen class that we have here at OSU. And I would like to share with you four methods of raising queens. The four methods I'm going to suggest to you uh, are all viable ways to raise queens. Keep in mind, you don't raise any queens. It's the worker bees and the nurse bees and the support bees that you have in your cell builders that actually do the job for you. What you're going to do is just manage the operation so that you get queen cells produced. There is no one right or wrong way to do this. As long as you select a method and feel comfortable with that method, it should produce queens for you. And so what I'm going to do is literally discuss <coughs> several methods that uh, are going to be talked about this afternoon. One is going to be the hole punch method. Gabe? Are both you and Dan working on that same yes. thing? Yes. Uh, they are up here. And uh, I basically have gone through the uh, hole punch method and uh, we demonstrate it, but I, uh, I'll be talking a little bit later about the Jenner system myself. The Jenner system is another method of raising queens. We have the Miller method, and we have the Doolittle method. If any of you want a copy of this CD, this PowerPoint presentation, uh, it will be available through Jim 2 site, so that as you are watching this and you're taking a lot of notes, uh, you can go back and view it again. Okay, what do we need to produce queens? You've already gone through the biology of queen production, but I'm just going to repeat some very important points. Every method that we have that we're going to use to raise queens, you need a good population of young honeybees to do the work of feeding the young larvae to produce good queens. Uh, you need a lot of bees and a lot of food available to those bees that are going to be doing the job for you, okay? You can't raise queens with a weak nuke. You can't do it. You need a good, strong uh, uh, cell builder. Uh, you need a calendar. These queens, I say there is no vacation when you go raising queens. No vacation. I don't care what the weather is. If a queen is going to emerge in 16 days from an egg and 12 days from the day that you graft a larva, there isn't anything that's going to change that schedule. You have to mark it. You can't put it up here in your memory. You've got to put it on a calendar. Mark it on a calendar. Because if you miss by one day, too late, you've got one queen. Uh, you need to have a nuke box to put each queen cell into. If you're going to raise a queen, she won't share the same box with another queen. So you have to have a separate nuke box. <coughs> and you need to work with good stock. I try to say to people, maybe you want to raise really mean bees. Maybe you've got a customer that has a farm building that he doesn't want anybody to enter, you know, that sort of thing. Well, you can select for that particular characteristic. If you want a bee that's meaner than hell and is going to go chasing somebody a hundred yards or more, if they encroach upon that hive of bees, you can raise that kind of bee. And if you want a gentle bee, you can raise a gentle bee too. But it all depends on the kind of stock you select. So I don't care what method you're using. You've got to stick with those principles uh, of stock evaluation uh, that has been talked about previously. The hole punch method. It's going to be discussed. Uh, if, are my times right here? 12.30 to 3. Uh, this uh, PowerPoint was put together for Pike. <coughs> and so my times are just a bit off. But from uh, 12.30 to 3, Gabe 
is going to be talking about, uh, Dan and Gabe are going to be talking about the whole punch method. Uh, there is an advantage to this method. It is a method that does not require removing a young larva from a cell and putting it into a cell <coughs> cup. The egg is laid into a cell by the queen. You come along and put a hole in the foundation that contains that cell and then move that portion of the cell onto a device that will hold it and introduce it to the queens just like you would with graft. And this will be demonstrated. It's a non-grafting method. Uh, it will be demonstrated. Uh, what you need basically are just the same here for all of these. You need young larva, uh, less than 24 hours old. You need a tool to remove the plug, as we will call it, from the foundation that you punch the hole in. Uh, you need something to heat your tool to keep it warm because a warm tool goes through wax a lot easier. Uh, you need something to heat. Uh, sometimes you use water. What do you use, Gabe? To heat the tool for yeah, water. And then wax and heat hot wax. Okay. Uh, a frame with bars which will hold the plug base. And you go back to cell builder. We're always going to be talking about the cell builder because it's going to be essential in all these methods. There are a number of designs of hole punch methods. Uh, Will Montgomery in Alabama uh, has a tool that he sells specifically for making these hole punches. But you can make your own very easily. The internet's full of all kinds of information on the hole punch method. Essentially, you take a comb, just a little bit out of focus, <coughs> but uh, we have a pointer here. Uh, essentially, what you're doing is you're making your comb look like uh, Swiss cheese. Okay, when you get done with the frame that you've taken uh, these plugs out of, it's going to have a lot of holes in it. And uh, I, you, you can find out how Gabe handles that. Uh, you need a, a plug to put your cell on. This is the heater used to heat the water. And this gives you an idea of what uh, the comb is going to look like, the plug, uh, when it is fastened to the base. This is another method uh, with the hole punch, which you can make your own uh, tool. Again, this is going to be on the internet or some way that you can contact uh, Jim's uh, program to see how it's going. <coughs> There's something called the Stanley hole punch method. <coughs> this is the Rogers method. Notice using dowels uh, with little caps on them as support for the, the plug. The advantages. Number one, it's very simple and easy to use. You can schedule queen production just like the Doolittle method. It does not require fine motor skills that is involved with using a grafting tool. Tools are readily available and inexpensive. <coughs> Disadvantage, you're always going to have to introduce a frame into your whatever your queen mother hive is, get her to lay into that frame and have it ready so that you can remove the plugs at the right time. This is not something that's always easy to schedule. <coughs> Jenner method. I'll be talking about this uh, later on this afternoon. This is a non-grafting method. How many of you in here are familiar with the Jenner system? Okay. What you need is a holding cage for the queen 
And this holding cage is a specially designed cage that has cell cups added to the back of it, which serve as the cell of the queen will lay an egg in. You take your selected queen, put her into this cage, you place this cage uh, into a hive uh, where the queen has been established in the past. What happens if you put her into a hive that she's not been established in? The bees are not going to be reacting to her very well. So you keep her in her own hive. Uh, Special holders and equipment for the cell cups are required, and you also need a cell belter hive. This is what the cage looks like. The cage uh, has two sides. One side has an excluder, which uh, I just did something here. Uh, the cage has an excluder on the front of it that worker bees can go through to attend to the queen, for example but the queen cannot get out of the cage. There are 110 holes for her to lay in, in this cage. And uh, then there is a cup. This is called a cell cup that goes onto the back side of the cage. This is what she places her egg in. This is what the back side of the cage looks like. Uh, there's 110 cups. And you would think that you'll get 110 queens that you can produce from the Jenner system. I'll talk in more detail about that later on. This is the front side of the cage without the queen excluder attachment. Also are the various tools that go along with this cage. There's like a <coughs> queen protector. Uh, you have spatial uh, holders for the the device that holds the queen cell cup, all of these things uh, you need to purchase. They're not made easily by yourself. This is a picture of a cell bar that has the spatial uh, cups that will hold the, the cell cups that the egg is going to be in or the larva is going to be in. <coughs> This is an example of the cage in place. <clears throat> this is a non-grafting method. It's good for the person who's not in a hurry and is not interested in raising a lot of queens. <clears throat> Disadvantages is somewhat expensive. I think a basic kit for 10 cells <coughs> is right around $75. Uh, in order to raise more than 10 queens, you can buy cell cups and you can buy more spatial frame attachment devices and so forth. Again, you can check almost any bee supply catalog and find uh, equipment that's uh, for sale. Now, keep in mind, Queen can lay an egg, an egg is an egg for three days, right? Okay, queens generally lay in a circular pattern. So basically, the older eggs are going to be in the center, and the younger ones are going to be spread around the outside. You can have a three-day spread in the age of the larva that's in this cage if you're trying to graft. And so that throws your calendar, gives you uh, a chance to have a queen that emerges earlier than the rest of the queens that you have on your cell bar. And so that's the reason why you have that cell protector that you put over your, uh, your developing queen cell. Because if one emerges before the others, she's not going to go around and cut down all of the other cells. All of that kind of equipment can get lost, misplaced. Uh, the more tools you have involved in raising queens, the greater chance of uh, missing out on it. The Miller method. Denny, uh, Denny Lamb in the back room will be demonstrating the Miller method. It's a non-grafting method. It was developed by C.C. Miller. He died in the 1920s. And it is very good for a person 
who is going to want to raise a few queens. What you need is a strong hive with a good queen, a frame with new wax foundation, sugar syrup to stimulate wax production. You need a knife, and again, a cell builder hive. The method is quite easy. You take a frame, put some new foundation in it, introduce it to the queen mother hive, the bees draw out the comb, uh, somewhat like this picture right down here, the queen begins to lay in it, you come back, you remove, uh, put a sawtooth cut into the comb so that the new young larvae are near the edge, and then you uh, put it back into a cell builder hive. You take the whole frame and put it into cell builder hive. And what will happen is, in those areas where the sawtooth fashion is, the bees will build, build queen cells uh, that are, again, really nice cells because the <coughs> larva is exposed at the edge of the comb and the bees build the cells down using a larger cell size than you would have, for example, an emergency queen cell. Okay. Almost any hive will build queen cells if there is available larvae. You can take a hive out, take the queen out of it, take some frames that have roots, stick them into that nuke, and let it go. Those bees will build emergency queen cells and produce queens. All you're doing here is you are selecting a queen that's going to produce these queen cells. And you're providing a method because of the ragged edge, the sawtooth fashion of the comb, there's more opportunity for the queen to be produced because the bees will produce the queen cells hanging straight down from the edge of that comb. <coughs> Not much labor. We probably have the equipment available. You don't need to go out and buy anything. And there's no grafting involved. The biggest limitation is the number of queen cells that can be produced. That's the biggest limitation. And scheduling, uh, you're depending on the bees to pick the larva that they want to build, uh, you know, the queen cells from. When you do the do little grafting method, you are selecting the larva. Uh, because that's the only thing the bees are going to be uh, working with. Joe Kowaleski, is Joe here? Joe Kowaleski will be discussing the uh, Doolittle method. There he is. Okay, there's Joe, back in the... Uh, so what you need, basically, again, with the Doolittle method, you need a queen that you have selected to raise new queens from. Uh, you need cell cups, cell bars, and cell frames. You need a grafting tool. You need good light. You have to have good eyesight. If you can't see a larva that you're trying to graft, it's going to be pretty hard to get that larva out of a cell into a cell cup. I have bifocals, and I'm going to tell you that it does get kind of frustrating to reach down into a cell and you can't see uh, what it is that you're trying to get out. You need good manual dexterity. If you're clumsy and all thumbs, could create a problem for you. Um, you need to work in a warm place. This is, you're taking a frame out of a hive you're going to be taking larva out of that frame and put it into a cell cup. Uh, how many of you have jumped into the Atlantic Ocean uh, in Maine in the summertime when the temperature has been 80, 90 degrees? Yeah, it's cold. Uh, you jump into that nice cold Atlantic with the water and you come up and your mouth comes open, your eyes kind of bulge out of your head and you're saying, what in the heck am I doing uh, in this cold water? Uh, because we're accustomed here in Ohio to jumping into water when it's warm, but somewhat temperate. And so the queen, the, excuse me, the larva, when you transfer it from the cell 
that was in the hive at approximately 92, 93 degrees, and you're moving it into a cold cell, so you've got to have a warm place to work. You want to not put that young larva through a cultural shock. Okay? And also, the cell building hive is required. Okay? Tools. There are all kinds of tools. I have seen people graft using nothing more than a toothpick. <coughs> They'll take it, put it in their teeth, and kind of chew on the little end, get it kind of like a little hook on the end. They'll stick it down there and they can graft very easily. Uh, you will have the Chinese grafting needle available. I've got five minutes left, so you'll have the Chinese grafting needle available to you. And you will have uh, a German grafting tool available. And you'll have to decide if you go into using the Doolittle grafting method, which one you want. In other words, you'll have to develop a skill and a, a comfort level with the tool that you use. <clears throat> cell cups, most people today are using plastic cell cups, but you can make your own. You can make your own. Uh, all you need to do is take a little dowel of the right dimensions and dip it into wax. There are a few secrets on how to get uh, that cell off of the dowel quickly. You put it in water, soapy water, before you dip it. And then the wax will come off. But it's time consuming. It's a job to be done during the winter. Not <coughs> Over here on the right is a frame with cell bars on it. Finished queen cells. You'll see these in Joe's demonstration today. Uh, you can schedule these and get a large number of queen cells. And the number of queen cells produced is dependent upon how strong and how well fed your cell builder is. Almost all commercial queen operations use the Doolittle method. You can schedule the grafting and you can harvest queens on schedule. Uh, you get good resulting queens. Disadvantage, most people become discouraged with grafting because you lack the manual dexterity or you have, uh, you damage the young larva when you remove it from the cell and transfer it into the cell cup. And a lot of people don't realize this is a skill that's acquired. It takes a while to become good at it. And if you give up right away, uh, you are probably saying, well, I don't like the Doolittle method. I'll use the Jenner method. I'll use the Miller method. I'll use the hole punch method because I get better results that way. You have to do what is best for you. You need to manage your cell builder and your nukes on a strict time schedule. If you're not good at managing time, you're going to have trouble with the Doolittle method. Uh, they told me that I had 30 minutes to talk and it's not really that long enough to, to do a good job with describing the various methods. But when you are exposed to these people talking about the various methods this afternoon, what you can do is inquire of them what they think. Because each person making a presentation mm -hmm. can talk to you about what is good and what is uh, not good to them. And just keep in mind that as beekeepers, we have prejudices. When you hear somebody say, this is the way you do something, and then somebody else says, no, this is the way you do something, and then somebody else over here says, no, you do it this way. That is beekeeping. And you have to develop your own style. Not based on what Dana Stallman says or anybody else says. If you try various methods, you will find that you're going to like one over the other. Okay? And so if I am giving a talk on the Jenner system, and I talk about the disadvantages more than the advantages, you need to realize that there may be somebody around that says, hey, Dana, you got it screwed around. Okay? And you later on can come back and say, well, Dana, uh, I listened to your talk. 
And I got to tell you, I don't agree. That's all right. Okay? I thank you so very much.